Okay, welcome back. We are going to look at part two of week two, and this is about functions, and I'm calling this functions from formulas. What's What most of you know is that you can define a function in terms of a formula. Not every function has a formula, but we're not going to talk about those. And here's some examples. Um, here are four functions, and you can see some simple or complex formulas that define these functions. Uh, but notice that those are actually built up of smaller parts, of simpler parts, using some operations. And the basic functions are called the toolkit functions. And think of them as atoms or, or molecules. Um, and here they are. Here's the toolkit functions that we're interested in in this class. We are going to look at more functions, the trig functions and the exponential and logarithmic functions. But this is it for now. We have constants, functions that always give you the same output. The identity, the output is the same as the input. Absolute value, it gives you the same number but makes it positive or zero. The squaring function, the cubing function, the inverting function, inverting squared, taking the square root and taking the cube root. There are, um, of, of these functions, the um, Let's see, these ones don't have domain of all real numbers. You shouldn't take a square root of a negative number, at least not in this class, and these ones you shouldn't divide by zero. Um, but there's ways to take those toolkit functions and build up using the four arithmetic operations, adding functions, subtracting functions, multiplying functions, dividing functions, and then there's this one other that we'll see a little bit later in this segment. And so as an example, Notice that this first one, 3 plus x, that's just a constant function plus the identity function, so it's combined with plus. Um, all the way to here, something more complicated, you can see that there's a ratio, so we're uh, dividing two functions. Uh, there's the numerator at the top and the denominator, and each of those are just combinations of more basic functions using the arithmetic operations. So that's an important way to think about functions that are given by formulas. So let's do some practice. Let's um, combine these functions. We're given, um, we're given two uh, functions, um, f and g. And here, if we want to add them, um, we would say, well, x squared plus 2x. That's f, and g is 6 minus x squared. And we could, we could simplify this and say that f plus g we actually write it like this, f of plus g of x equals, well, the x squareds cancel out. Uh, let's put that in red. x squareds cancel out. And we're left with a 2x plus 6. And let's go down here to f minus g. If you subtract functions, well, you just subtract the formulas. So it's x squared plus 2x minus 6 minus x squared. And you could get away with just leaving it like that, but we probably want to simplify that. We have x minus negative x squared, so that's 2x squared. That's this x squared and this x squared. There's a 2x, that's the only linear term, minus 6. And so here's the formula for uh, f minus g. And let's multiply them. So fg, that's multiplied fg, the product of those two functions, is x squared plus 2x times 6 minus x squared. And if we actually simplify this, and you don't have to, but we have to multiply the first terms, the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last terms, if we really want to multiply that out, and we'll get, let's see, the first term is 6x squared, outer, minus x to the fourth, inner, that's a 12, a 12x, and the last minus 2x cubed. And by convention, we put these in decreasing order of power. So there's the x to the fourth. There's an x cubed term. There is an x squared term, 6x squared. And there's a linear term. And so I would but this is, has my final answer. Uh, this is 
f times g of x, that's the product. Now all three of those we're just adding, subtracting, and multiplying, and so the domain for all of those is going to be the set R of all real numbers. Uh, because there's nothing that could go wrong, so the domain looks for um, uh, these three, three, three ones, but over here we're going to divide, so we have to watch out for division by zero. But otherwise it's easy. f over g as a function is just the, the ratio x squared plus 2x, that's f over 6 minus x squared. And so we have uh, to remember, but 6 minus x squared um, uh, can't be zero. So we should solve 6 minus x squared equals zero, or 6 equals x squared. And there's two solutions, uh, 6 and negative 6. So on a number line, let's write it out on a number line. Um, here's root 6, and here is negative root 6. But everything else is good. Um, the negative numbers below negative 6 are good. We can't use negative root 6. All the numbers up to root 6 are good. And after that, they're good. And that just means that we're going to have two intervals. Let's, see, let's change color to make to highlight it. Um, there's negative infinity to negative root six, round bracket union, negative root six to positive root six, union, positive root six to infinity, and that's the domain. Um, <clears throat> we just had to exclude two points, so it broke it up into three intervals. Okay, let's. Um, jump into composition of functions. This is the fifth way to combine functions. If you take the input, the input on x, plug it into the g function, you get g of x, and we'll plug that into f, the f function, and we'll get f of g of x, and this is called uh, f composed with g. We pronounce it f composed with g, but we could write it with that symbol, the open circle, which is the, um, <clears throat> the composition of function symbol. It is different from plus minus multiplication and division. And as a quick example, um, with two simple functions x plus 3 and 2x, um, f composed with g is f of g, and that ends up being 2x plus 3 because we do the inside function first, 2x, and then add 3. But if we do it in reverse order, g of f of x, we want g of x plus 3, that's the f, and what g does is it just doubles the answer. So here's g of f of x. And just keep in mind that f composed with g and g composed with f are not the same. The order matters. Some people remind us that some mathematicians like thinking about um, putting on your socks and putting on your shoes. Putting on your socks first and then putting on your shoes it gives a very different result from putting on your shoes first and then putting on your socks. So quick uh, practice. Um, here are two functions given as graphs, and we want um, f of g of 3. So I want g of 3. The input is 3, so I'll go up to the point on the curve, and the output is 4. So that means that uh, g of 3 is 4. So f of g of 3 is f of 4. And now I have to go to the f graph. The input is 4. And there's the point. Um, this is the point uh, 4, 0. So the output is 4. And there's the answer for f of g of 3. How about um, f of f of 5? Well, f of 5, here's the input. And so there is the point 5. And the output is the second coordinate. You can see that that is the number on the y-axis, that's 1. So this is f of 1. I'm going from the inside out. And then the, now the input is 1. Here's the point on the curve. The output is 3. So the output is 3 for that second problem. g of f of 1. Well, I just figured out that f of 1 is 3. So it's going to be g of 3. And I also figured out that g of 3 is 4. So I 
already did the work on the graphs and I know the answers, and we can jump to the next problem. Uh, g of g of 3, looks like I put an extra parenthesis here, but g of 0, um, here's the g graph, so here's the input 0, and I go up to the point on the curve, and the y value is 2, so I want g of 2, and now I have to put the input 2, and the output is going to be 0, because it's that point uh, 2, 0, so g of 2 is 0, and that is the answer there. Let's go to the next problem. Uh, compose these functions. Well, they're given by formulas. And what I can do, I need uh, f of g of 2. So f of, well, let's see. Uh, the g function says take 3 times the input, minus 5. So that's f of 6 minus 5, <coughs> which is f of 1. And f of 1 is going to be given by this formula. So it's 2 times 1 squared plus 1. And that's going to end up as 2 plus 1 or 3. That's the answer for f of g of 2. What about f of g of x if we don't use a just a number, use a variable? Well, that's easy to do. We could start by just working from the inside out. We want f of 3x minus 5. So 3x minus 5 is the input, and what f does, f takes the input, multiplies it by, well, it first squares it, then multiplies it by 2, and then adds 1. And so whatever the input is, um, that is delivered right here. That's 3x minus 5. And um, we could leave it like that. That's the answer. And you could simplify if you want. Let's go over here and compose them the, the other way. Remember, this is uh, g composed with f. Up here, this was f composed with g. So we'll likely get a different answer. But g um, of f is, we will take 2x squared plus 1 and put that into the g function. And so g says whatever you have, whatever is in that box, you're going to multiply it by 3 and subtract 5. And so it's 2x squared plus 1, and let's uh, just, oops, uh, that's, oh, the eraser is too big. Uh, let's undo that, uh, get a smaller eraser, and I'll just erase the, this top part here, and erase the bottom, and I'll turn these, that box into parentheses, and that is the answer. And again, you could simplify that, but you don't need to. Uh, let's figure out g composed with g of x. That's just g of g of x. <clears throat> and we can write it like this. Another way to do this is to work from the outside. So if I want g of g of x, that means I want 3 times g of x minus 5. And that equals 3 times g of x is 3 times x minus 5, minus 5, and there's the answer, but if you want to simplify it, you could multiply this out, that's 9x minus 15 minus 5, which is 9x minus 15. Um, you have to know how to simplify, but if you're not asked to simplify, why bother?